Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for working with open back bezels and resin. So before we get started here, you can see that I already have my resin working and I'm using the Nun Design resin today. So I have equal parts A and equal parts of B in my little cup there. And the cups come with the resin um, if you purchase the Nun Design resin. So that's what I have here as well as um, I have some smaller popsicle sticks. I like to work with smaller ones, um, as you can see here. The Nun Design resin does come with larger sticks, which is actually great if you're going to be doing a larger resin pour. But typically when I'm doing my resin, I only do a few pieces at a time. Um, however, once that resin is created, you really have to make at least this much, uh, which if you look on the cup here, we do uh, one tablespoon and then two tablespoons. So it's half and half. Um, so you really do kind of have to make this much. It will help your resin set up a little bit better. It really needs enough of that to make that chemical reaction. So just so you know, so I've gone ahead and mixed that. So it's kind of just setting up for me right now. Uh, you can see that it's all one homogenous color, which is exactly what you want. Should be nice and clear. And so I have a couple pieces here on my little pieces of tape. So I'm gonna show you how to do this first, because this is a great thing you can do either before you mix your resin or while you're waiting for it to set up. So I have just here some packing tape. And what I like to do is anytime I finish my packing tape, and if this has ever happened to you, it's the most frustrating thing is to try to get that little tab off at the end. So I leave a nice big tab because if you look here, there's only a little tab there and it allows me to move the piece around without getting my finger stuck and then pulling up that resin. It has definitely happened to me, so this is a trick I have learned. <laughs> All right, so I have my piece here. So I'm just gonna take some off. Just gonna cut a little length off of here. And before I work with that, I'm gonna come in and just make a nice, nice loop on my tape, just like that, so it's all ready to go for next time. That way you don't have to try to get your nail underneath there. So I'm gonna set my tape aside. So I have this piece with this piece folded over in the front. I know it's clear, so it's hard to see, but then you just kinda fold this piece in leaving a sticky area in the center for your bezel. Now this is where you have to work in a little bit of a clean environment, making sure there's no uh, issues on that tape. And then you take your piece here and you press it right down onto that tape. And what I like to do is just kind of give it a little like little movement around, you know, just make sure it's getting on all those little pieces. Try to keep your fingers out. We don't want any fingerprints in there. So just kind of move your fingers along the edge of the bezel and just kind of make sure that we're not gonna have any spillage. Perfect. You can also flip it over if you like. Just kind of holding it up here where I'm not gonna be pouring that resin and just kind of run your finger along the back just to make sure. All right, so now I have my pieces that I can kind of move around. Now, another thing is once you pour your resin, before you do so, I like to put mine under a little plastic bag. You can see that my work surface is a little different today. It's covered with some wax paper, so that's what this is underneath here. But I like to have this because it allows me, again, to move it around. Ideally, we don't want to be moving around our resin once we've poured it. However, if you need to, that's a good little trick is just to have a nice little plastic bag for each individual piece. That way you can kind of move it around your workspace. Okay, now the other thing to consider, and I know this might be taking it maybe a little bit too far, but as someone who's had some resin spill and some pieces ruined, um, purchase a level and make sure that your work surface is absolutely 100% level. No dips or anything in your work surface. I know that might be taking it a little bit too far, but like I said, if you're especially if you're trying to create a domed look as opposed to a flat look, today I'm gonna be doing all flat looks on my pieces here. But I do want you to be aware that having that flat, like super duper flat surface will help the end result. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda check on my resin here. Okay, good. Now the other thing that I wanna talk about is we're gonna talk a little bit about some pigments here. So I have some opaque pigments. I have a green, which you can see is very, very dark. And then I also have a white. Now this pigment will probably last you a lifetime with the amount that is in here, uh, depending on what you're doing. But I have some toothpicks here as well because the toothpicks actually help you kind of navigate exactly how much you want in each of your cups. So I'm gonna do um, a green cup and a white cup 
And the great thing is that we do have a black as well. So if you get the white and the black, you can always make a darker green or a lighter green. So it's just about that color mixing. And you can just have a lot of fun with that, just kind of discovering colors. But again, if you are trying to match colors, let's say you're creating um, a line of jewelry and you wanna create this piece and you wanna make several pieces, don't say to yourself, oh, well, you know, I think I'll, I'll do the green today and then I, I think I'll remember exactly how I did the green later. In my experience, it's very difficult to duplicate the exact color, especially if you are trying to do so. Now, I mean, for most of my purposes, if it's green, it's green, you know, it, it's all right, you know, but you just wanna be really careful if you are trying to create a very specific result. Okay, so I'm gonna let my resin set up here just a little bit more, and then when I come back, we're gonna do some, uh, we're gonna pour it in some cups, we're gonna add some pigment, and then we're gonna start adding it to our bezels. Okay, so I have my cups here ready to go. And as you can see, I'm now wearing gloves. If when you are doing that very first part uh, where you're mixing the resin, I recommend gloves as well. Just stuff can spill and that way you don't have to have it on your hands. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is have your lighter ready. This is just a, just a Bic lighter. You can also use a barbecue lighter as well. Um, sometimes that's easier on, on the hand and your <laughs> fingers are a little further away from the flame. So whatever your comfort level is there. Um, okay, so I have my popsicle sticks. I have my toothpicks here ready to go. I have my pigments. Now the first part is I'm gonna distribute this into two cups. Now I always like to leave a little extra resin just in case it doesn't work out. So when I mean you need to start with at least one ounce there or your, uh, your two tablespoons, the reason I say that is it has to have that chemical reaction, but you'll notice when I pour it into each individual cup, the resin is already set up, so I don't need to do half and half. You don't need to do that much if you don't need it. You can see that my little bezels there are gonna be nice and small. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually going to kind of scrape off my little piece here, my um, popsicle stick, just kind of scrape that off and hold that off to the side because I'm gonna use it as like a little scooper. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour a little bit in this one. And that should do it. You can see I just kind of scooped the little last bit of it. And I'm gonna pour a little bit in this one. And just kind of scoop that off. All right, so now it's gonna drip down the side, so I'm gonna set that off. But this is why you want to have your resin on a nice little piece of wax paper. It really will help. So I'm gonna keep this popsicle stick clean and put it back in the resin over there. Now, here are gonna be my two cups. Let's start with the green because the green could be get the white actually. So let's start with our green and just go ahead and set that aside. Now, what I like to do here is I like to take a toothpick and drip it onto the toothpick ever so slightly. See, it's very, very little. That actually might be quite a bit. So now I just can start swirling it in there and you can start to see that green develop. It's really, really beautiful. Now this is gonna be an opaque color, so you can make it as dark as you want it to. However, the way that pigments work with resin is you don't wanna be adding too much because it will knock off that chemical reaction and your resin will just never dry, and we don't want that. So you can see that mine is still actually pretty clear. You can see that a lot of that pigment kind of stays on that little toothpick there. Now here's something, the, here's why I have so many toothpicks, in case you may have been wondering. I like to not <laughs> drip my color right into my piece there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set, I'm gonna scrape this off, and I'm gonna set this aside onto my little plastic baggie there. That way it's ready to just fold up and go. So now I'm gonna take another toothpick, and I think I wanna add a little bit more touch of green. Not too much, just another little dab. There we go, that should be plenty. And I'm just gonna try to darken that green just a little bit. Just make it a little bit of a richer color. Now, if you wanted to, you could make this a little bit white or a little bit more opaque by adding that, that white to it. I'm gonna leave mine as is. I think it's a really beautiful color. You can kind of see it when I pick it up there. Um, so I'm gonna leave that. And now let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one here. I'm gonna just close up my green though. 
I thought I was gonna add some white to that, but it's actually looking really nice. So here's my next cup. And again, coming in with one of my fresh toothpicks. All right, and same deal. This is a little bit of a different top, but that's okay. It will work just the same. You just have to be very careful about pouring out that white a little bit at a time. Okay, see, see I have just a little bit on the end of my toothpick and I'm gonna go in and start to make that white. And just swirl it around. I think I'm definitely gonna need some more for this one because I want it to look very French enamel-like. So you can see that it's still very, very clear. So I think immediately I know that I'm gonna add a little bit more, but you can always add, you can't subtract, so keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and scrape that off. Now the reason I don't wanna do this is I don't wanna get resin back on here because then it will harden and then you'll never get to use this again. So that is why we do that. <laughs> I know it might be a little, little strange to have all of this Oops, sorry for the bump of the camera there, apologize. All right. There we go, nice, nice good one. And again, you can clearly tell that I have a little bit more resin here than I'm going to actually need. So it's absolutely fine to have other pieces ready to go, or I always like to have a mold nearby because I can always use cabochons. So if you have a nice cabochon mold, that's a great way to utilize this. Okay. There we go, I am liking that. Making sure I'm scraping all the sides. I don't want any clumps of color there. All right, beautiful. All right, so stick with me. We are ready for part three where we're going to actually add this into the bezels. Okay, so now we are ready to add our resin. Now, if you're working with a really small sliver like that, I would recommend dripping your resin using the toothpick. Now you can see I've taken my gloves off and I do that for dexterity purposes because really it shouldn't be getting anywhere at this point. Um, everything should be done and ready to go. So here's the tricky part. All right, let's go ahead and come in so we can see our piece here. There we are. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so I have my resin here. Now, when you drip it in, I recommend kind of getting down to eye level here and making sure that that little drop, you're prepared and it's gonna go right where it needs to go. So let's see if we can do this with the toothpick here. I've never tried this here, so this will be a first time. There we go. So just kind of let it, let it fall, let it drip. It looks like we're gonna need a little bit more in there. All right, so you can start to see it come in there just a little bit. Now this, because it is so slim, this is really, really tedious here. But you can just see that I'm kind of guiding it with the toothpick. That's another thing I want you to kind of keep in mind. But again, this is why it's so important to have a nice level work surface. Just let it kind of fill up the space. The resin is really instinctive. It will go where it wants to go. You don't really have to force it too much. So take this part really, really slow. I know if you're watching this, this might be like, oh, come on, just do it already. <laughs> but you want to take your time, and that's what I kind of want to demonstrate here, the, the reason for that, especially when you're adding small little globs like that. All right. Now I just noticed that mine kind of leveled off, so I'm just getting down and kind of looking and making sure that's exactly the way I want it to be. And I am actually really, really happy with that. Okay, so now I'm gonna move my green aside 
and just this is where I'm just going to adjust this just a little bit because I want it to be in camera. Normally I wouldn't be moving it. <laughs> All right, and I'm actually going to come in with the white now. And this is still a very small space, so I'm still going to continue to drip with the white, but you'll notice I'm going to hold it a little bit differently. So I'm going to kind of hold it at an angle and I can get a little bit more in there and be confident in kind of dripping right into that bezel there. Slightly larger globs, if you will. And you'll notice I'm kind of playing with the resin. I'm just kind of guiding it to this side over here, making sure it makes its way across the entire piece. Okay, I think I can do one more here. And I'm just gonna check my leveling. So I'm down at eye level, okay, I can come back, I can add a little bit more, I'm seeing a little dip. Now I don't wanna dome this, I want it to feel flat. So I actually think I was able to accomplish that there. Okay, perfect, so that is one piece down. So I am going to move it off to the side. All right, now let's come in with this piece here. Now, this is a slightly larger piece. I, I am not gonna fill up the top. I'm only gonna do one on this one, but I just wanna show you how it looks by using um, a little bit of uh, the popsicle stick in case you are filling a larger, larger piece. You can kind of just scoop it and drip it in just like that. And again, just kind of guiding it, making sure not to touch those edges. We don't wanna get any resin on our edges there. But what I recommend, if you wanna get started in resin and you're watching this video going, oh no, I, I, I can't do that, that's, that's way too complicated. Get some pieces, test it out, try it out. I promise you it's not as scary. That's why I'm doing this video, so that you can get some nice tips and tricks. All right, and I want you to come into this one. And now for this one, I am going to go back to my toothpick here. So I'm just gonna scrape off my popsicle stick, set that aside and I'm gonna fill up the top one here. So again, kind of coming back down to eye level here, making sure I get just enough, but not too much, because I wanna make sure that this first drip is really accurate. And we're just gonna drip right in the center there. Slower is better, your results will be finer. Also, you'll notice that I am, I'm very lucky here, I'm not getting a lot of bubbles but I think that is because I'm going nice and slow and just kind of letting the resin do its thing. It wants to bond to the outer rim here and to the tape. So just give it its space, give it its time, don't mess with it too much. It will tell you where it wants to go. All right, so actually I think I'm very happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna set my resin aside. Let me see if I can get all three of these in frame. I'm just gonna come out here just a little bit. So now I have my three different pieces and they're all set to go. Now I usually like to let mine sit for like a minute or two um, until you come in with the lighter, but the purpose of the lighter is to get any bubbles that may have occurred to bubble up and come to the surface. So you'll see, and I'm gonna do it just on the center one so that you can actually uh, see. Let me kind of come back in here, beautiful. All right, so hold your lighter kind of to the side like this, light it up. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna gently touch that to the surface, just get it nice and close, and those bubbles will disappear. Now, I don't have any bubbles, so you're not seeing them pop. However, that's how you do it. <laughs> All right, so that uh, concludes this video. I hope you found this really helpful. Um, as you can see, I have still a lot of resin left over. I did not use very much to fill these. Perhaps if I had filled the other side of the bezels, you know, you can kind of use your imagination. But I have some, uh, uh, molds and stuff ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. But thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. You can get all of these supplies and see even more resin tutorial videos by heading over to beataholic.com.